So before we get to the actual case studies on Da Qing Long Tang, I thought I would start out with just a very interesting case, which is part case and part just like very interesting history um, regarding China during during the communist times, um, a period that a lot of people I think have interest in because uh, the the making of TCM is sort of attributed to uh, the 1950s and 60s to a large degree. So this story or case study takes place in 1957. So in 1957, uh, Mao Zedong was attending a big conference, a big uh, CCP party conference in Qingdao. And as he was known to do, um, whenever he had the chance, he, he was he was a big swimmer. So he had gone out to swim um, after the conference and it was apparently like cold weather that day. And when he came home, he almost immediately developed a cold. Now, obviously when Mao Zedong goes anywhere, he, he had like a large uh, retinue, uh, like a medical staff following him. Um, but despite their, the medicines they gave him and the treatment that they gave him, his his condition actually worsened for uh, three to four days, um, despite the meds. Now this was this was bad news because um, only a a few days later he had to attend basically what was one of the the most important events of the whole year, which was the military parade, um, where he has to kind of you know. As, as the tanks and, and so forth are rolling by, he has to be in attendance to watch and wave and so forth. But he couldn't even attend the, the meetings at the Qingdao conference. He was in such bad shape. <clears throat> so at the time, um, he had a high fever. He had a cough, potentially even um, pneumonia. Unfortunately, we don't have very, very specific details of this case study, um, but we know he, he had a cough dizziness, lack of appetite, fatigue, and then you have very bad insomnia too. So at the time, things weren't really going well. And then this guy, Mr. Shu, I think his name in Chinese is um, Shu Tong, um, one, of, one of Mao's advisors. He knew of, of a very, very famous doctor in Shandong named, named Liu Huimin. And he had been treated by Liu Huimin several times himself. And so he, he advised uh, Mao to call in this doctor and have him take a look. Um, and Mao kind of said, well, you know, it's on you. Like if, if, uh, if something goes wrong with me, it's on you. And he said, no, it's, it's fine. This guy's incredible. Just take my word for it. So, so Liu Huiming came in and um, he is this like very, very famous doctor in Shandong. He studied directly under Zhang Xichun um, for, for many years, Zhang Xichun being one of probably the most famous doctors um, in the, the first half of the 20th century in China. And so uh, Liu came in and he took the pulse, he got his symptoms and everything. And he he said something to the effect of, "This is just this is just like an external pattern, um, with some like internal heat. Um, all we have to do is sort of resolve the exterior, and you'll be fine." This he says in this very sort of almost cavalier way. If you if you look at the Chinese, and so he prescribes him Da Qing Long Tang plus Xuan Zao Ren. Now, as we've been talking about, Da Qing Long Tang is. A, a very strong formula. The the amount of ma huang is double what it is in, in ma huang tang. Um, and people, obviously, when you're dealing with like a head of state, people are going to be really, really nervous. Um, and so his, his team of advisors, including his medical staff, said absolutely uh, do not take this um, by by any means, you should you should not take take this medicine. Um, but Mao was was no stranger to Chinese medicine. Um, <clears throat> when 
when he was in Yan'an in Sanxi province, um, sort of cloistered away with the, the, the Communist Party during the Civil War, he had had arthritis that was cured um, or, you know, taken care of uh, using strictly Chinese medicine. So he had some, some belief in Chinese medicine already. Um, and so despite the, the urging of basically his entire team, he took the medicine and um, within a day, he was, he was completely better um, to the, the shock and awe of everyone around him. And so he said at that time, he said, I haven't taken Chinese medicine in 20 years, but today I'm once again reminded of its profound efficacy. And actually, he was, this was not just lip service. He went on to take Liu Huimin onto his permanent staff, um, his permanent medical staff. And Liu Huimin would treat him several times in the coming years. And that, that same year, Liu Huimin followed him to Russia or the Soviet Union at that time um, to, he had him promote Chinese medicine to the Soviet Union. And he gave several speeches about the efficacy of Chinese medicine, uh, herbs and acupuncture. So a lot of people will say basically Liu Huimin in that one day, basically he had the fate of Chinese medicine sort of resting on his shoulders. Um, and what did he do? He used one of the, the absolute strongest um, exterior resolving uh, uh, formulas in that, that Chinese medicine has. Um, a formula that if you don't really know your stuff, um, you can run into some trouble with this because of the high dose of mahuang. But for him, it was just, it was just another day on the job and he, he executed it perfectly. And it was in that same year, or actually the next year, but maybe several months later only, that um, Mao Zedong went on to say um, one of his famous quotes, which he said, Zhong yi shi yi wei da de bao ku, meaning Chinese medicine is an amazing treasure trove or treasure house um, of you know, formulas and, and um, medical knowledge. And so sometimes people will cynically say, um, you know, Mao was just promoting Chinese medicine um, because, you know, he, he wanted to stir nationalist sentiment or something, but it was clear that in reality, he saw the proof in the pudding. He was, he was very aware of how incredibly efficacious Chinese medicine was. So here, I just showed uh, some pictures. These are both from 1957. This is Mao uh, actually sitting on the beach in Qingdao. Um, I don't know if it was the same time as when he got the cold, but you know, just evidence of him of him actually being sitting there on the beach getting ready to have one of his famous swims. And this is also a picture of him in 1957 during an address. And you'll see like we, we uh, talked about before um, with Wang Huang, um, when he talked about the kind of constitution of, of someone for Da Qing Long Tang, it's usually sort of a, a, a bigger, more rugged person with a strong constitution. And notably, they'll have darker skin which Mao Zedong really did have, have darker skin. He has that big, full cheeks, um, sort of a strong constitution. You know, he was always um, swimming. He was, he was from like uh, more Northern climes. And so um, from a constitution perspective, we can certainly um, assume that he, he was, he sort of fit the, the Da Qing Long Tang pattern. Now, of course, also in terms of his sympt symptomology, um, it doesn't say whether or not he was sweating, but we can assume he wasn't sweating. But that high fever certainly fits with sort of this internal heat um, being trapped inside due to the, the replete exterior. And then um, 
we don't know about the cough, but you might assume that the cough might have had phlegm that was a little bit on, on the yellow side, also indicating this internal heat with this with the replete exterior again. And then the final thing that's quite interesting here is that he had Swanzaren, right? Because he has insomnia. And Liu Hui Min, when he used um, Swanzaren, he would actually, his starting dose was 30 grams, um, which is substantially higher. Most people will do like three to five um, qian, which is like nine to 15 grams. So uh, Liu Hui Min was known for his high doses. Another reason why people really advised Mao not to uh, take his herbs, but he did anyways. And he indeed changed the course of, and the, the fate of Chinese medicine with essentially just one formula.